Hello everyone. So today we'll be covering a very important topic, physical properties of dentine. So let's start what do you understand by dentine. Dentine is referred to as the main component of the tooth structure. It forms the structure and the bulk of the tooth because it covers the entire root and the main portion of the crown. So, and as in the diagram, we'll see the outermost layer, the hardest tissue is enamel. Then the inside part, that is the entire root, which is shaded here. And the main portion of the crown is formed by dentine, which forms the bulk of the tooth and the inner soft tissue here is the pulp. We are studying the physical properties of dentine. So the first physical property, which is very important here is the color. Now color is attributed to the ions present in the dentine. It is usually pale yellow, but when the age increases with aging, it darkens. So dark yellow color is formed. So with increasing age, the color darkens. This is an important point to be noted in the MCQ. The first physical property of dentine, color. The second important property of dentine is the hardness. So hardness is basically the property due to the mineral content. So let's see, enamel is considered the hardest tissue followed by the dentine, then comes the cementum. So enamel contains almost 96% of the mineral content followed by dentine which is about 65% and cementum that is about 40 to 50% range. The key fact to be noted here is if the question is asked hardest vital tissue, this term is important. What is vital? Why is it called vital? Which contains the living protoplasm. So if the question is the hardest vital tissue, then the answer will be dentine because dentine is a living tissue. It's a vital structure, whereas enamel is a non-vital tissue. So this is important for the exams. The hardest, hardest vital tissue is dentine. Okay, so now we'll move forward with the physical properties of dentine. Then comes the properties of brittleness and viscoelasticity. So unlike enamel, which is brittle and hard, dentine has limited ability to distort and it's regain its shape. So it is known as viscoelastic. Dentine is comparatively viscoelastic, whereas enamel is hard and brittle. Then comes the resiliency. The resiliency is the property of elasticity. It shows elastic recovery to some extent. So dentine has the property to recover. It is subjected to slight deformation. So dentine is somewhere, it's somewhat harder in its central part than near the pulp or on its periphery. This is a very important point that dentine is harder in its central part near the pulp than near the pulp or its own periphery. Dentine of primary teeth is slightly less hard than that of the permanent teeth. So as I already said that the hardness increases with the mineral content. So during primary stage of primary teeth, the mineral contents are less. So the dentine of the primary teeth is slightly less hard than that of the permanent teeth. Then comes the overall hardness value. This is a very important. It could be asked as an MCQ, the number of hardness value. That it is for enamel, it is 343 plus minus 23 and for dentine, it is 68 plus minus 3 respectively. This one has to remember, the hardness of dentine averages one fifth that of the enamel and its hardness near the DE, that is dentino enamel junction is about three times greater than the pulp. So this is also important that dentine forms one fifth of the hardness of the enamel and it is harder near the dentino enamel junction than near the pulp. How much? Three times. Now we are covering the composition of the dentine. Uh, dentine is further divided into two parts, the inorganic content and the organic content. Inorganic is 65%, whereas organic is 35%. The inorganic are the minerals. Organic is further divided into 
collagen and mucopolysaccharides type 1 collagen type 1 collagen is the main collagen fibrils these are further divided into the mucopolysaccharides portion is further divided into the proteoglycans and the glycoproteins so dentin consists of 35% organic matter and water and 65% inorganic material inorganic constituents can be removed by decalcification so decalcification can only be done for the ones which has minerals whereas the organic constituents are removed by the process known as incineration and organic chelation now we'll discuss about the inorganic components the inorganic components has been shown by the process called the x-ray diffraction method which shows that it is made up of hydroxyapatite crystals with the chemical formula this is the chemical formula for the hydroxyapatite crystals now this is one point to be remembered by each student that the hydroxyapatite crystal of dentin is poor in the calcium com calcium content compared to enamel and it is richer in the carbon content compared to enamel the crystals are plate shaped and are much smaller than the hy hydroxyapatite crystals which are present in enamel the diameter of these crystals are 35 nanometers and the thickness is around 3 to 10 nanometers dentin hydroxyapatite crystals are 300 times smaller than the enamel hydroxyapatite crystals the ratio if you see the ratio of the size of enamel is to dentin crystals is about 300 is to 1 now we are discussing the organ organic components of dentin so the organic component of the dentin is further divided which is about 35% is divided into two parts the collagen and the mucopolysaccharides as all already mentioned so 90% of the organic components of collagen protein are type 1 collagen fibers they form the main portion of the dentin and then other collagen fibers which are present are type 3 and type 4 although type 7 is also pre present but in trace that is trace amount very less so type 7 is the least amount in traceable amounts it is present type 3 and type 4 are also present but the main collagen protein which is present is the type 1 protein so collagen type 1 fibers are the main fibers and it contains 56% of the mineral content is within the collagen fibers they forms the main nucleature of the dentin collagen fiber is itself mineralized this has to be taken into account next is the non collagenous proteins the mucopolysaccharides part which are further divided into the proteoglycans and the glycoproteins so the following are the names which one has to remember if in case i already mentioned these two proteins are present only in dentin only in dentin so dentin sialo phosphoprotein dentin matrix protein dentin sialo protein dentin matrix protein dentin sialo phosphoprotein osteopontin osteocalcin osteonectin matrix entres extracellular protein and phosphorin are the main components of the non collagenous protein now we begin with the functions of these glycoproteins and proteoglycans it has a role in the dentin formation to begin with the decorins and the biglycans it it prevents the premature mineralization in the protein 
then comes the dentine phosphoprotein this is very important protein in dentine and it contains the aspartic acid it helps in the nucleation and the crystal growth and it is present on maturation and mineralization front of the dentine formation then comes the third one is the dsp dentine sialophosphoprotein it is the marker this could be the mcq which could be the asked this is the marker for the dentine synthesis this protein dsp is the marker for the dentine synthesis and it found it is found in the pulp stem cells it contains 10% sialic acid and ameloblastin like protein are seen in the entire dentine so ameloblastin like proteins are seen everywhere in the dentine and they all help in the crystal growth so the main formation of dentine occurs due to this non collagenous or the gly glycoproteins and the proteoglycans and the important one is this dentine sialophosphoprotein also known as the marker for dentine synthesis so now we'll be discussing the facts which are to be remembered and are very important in uh, mcqs for the neat exams these are the meritus prep facts now you have to remember that certain growth factors are very important in dentine which perform very specific functions they help in the repair of the dentine the most important of the growth factors which help in the repair of the dentine are the transforming growth factor beta 1 that is tgf beta 1 then comes the bone morphogenic proteins 2 4 6 and 7 so these the bone morphogenic proteins also play a very important role in the repair of the dentine then comes the insulin like growth factors and the last one are the vascular vascular endothelial growth factor certain growth factors are released from the inner enamel epithelium and they help in the organizing the odontoblast in uh, cytoskeletal assembly and the transforming growth factor beta helps in the formation of the tubular dentine the bone morphogenic protein helps in the formation of the osteodentine so now we are discussing the most frequently asked questions from this topics physical properties of dentine you need to understand the structure of the dentine i'll be discussing the two three recently asked questions from the topic the one of the question is the inner wall of the tubule that is dentinal tubule is highly cal uh, calcified and is termed as so when you see this question you should know the op all the options you should know everything about each and every option to mark the correct answer so they have asked about the term for the inner wall of the tubule which is highly cal calcified the first option is the peritubular dentine the dentine what do you understand by peritubular dentine the dentine which forms the walls of dentinal tubule it is highly calcified nine percent this is very important point nine percent more mineralized then the inter tubular dentine so this could be as it is highly calcified so this could be the answer the next option is the intra tubular dentine now intra tubular dentine is the other name of the peri tubular dentine because the calcification the calcification of dentinal tubules starts from internal wall so peritubular dentine is also known as intra tubular dentine 
it means these both are the same things they both are the same term synonyms and the, so this could be the answer because these both are the same thing then comes mental dentin what do you know about mental dentin mental dentin is the most prominent outermost layer of the dentin formation which takes place so this is not mentioned in the question so we'll go with the answer both the next the next question which is asked is again a very frequently asked questions there are many questions related to the thickness of the dentin the number of tubules of the dentin present in a square unit area the intensity of the number of tubules that are present in at a particular site so when these or such questions come the in, the language of the question is very important you have to mark the diameter the region where it has been asked in this question the um, the question is the diameter of the odontoblastic tubules at the point of origin at their pulpal end so mark the words pulpal end is where they have asked the diameter of the odontoblastic tubules and this is a factual question direct from the standard book and the answer for this question is 3 to 4 micrometers at the pulpal end which decreases to decreases to 1 micrometer at the external end this is the direct fact questions so you'll know the answer if you've read so the this is the other question which is again asked based on the facts regarding the dentin tubules so the number of tubules mark the words per unit area now we know one of the fact that the number of tubules per unit area from pulp to the external surface is 4 is to 1 so here the answer is direct it is four times more more at the pulpal region so this is the correct answer there are such facts which we have to remember the other questions can be formed like uh, the the thickness of the dentin so it is around 3 to 10 micrometers then uh, the other question which can be formed is about the number of tubules per square millimeter at the pulpal end which is around 50000 to 90000 range is there so such facts are directly taken from the book which you cannot go wrong so best of luck